Yo, welcome to Music is a Day Job. I'm your host, Sean, and Music is a Day Job is brought to you by the Concert App. The Concert App is an artist accelerator app that takes artists from opener to headliners to on tour. Gives the fan the best experience in independent live music. <clears throat> now, today, what we're going to talk about is what's the first thing every musician needs to do? And no matter if you're in the business for a while or whatever like that, even if you had to go back and do this, it would it would suck. But when you first get into deciding whether you want to be a musician, I tell people this. Make this decision out the gate. Like when I meet new kids that are coming up, the first decision you need to make is, is this a hobby or is this what you want to do with your life? Decide it as early as possible. Because it'll save you a bunch of money. It'll save you a bunch of time. It'll save you a lot of things. It'll save you heartache. It'll save you everything. So decide what, like, is this a hobby or is this a job? And I bring this up because I, I, I'll hear from artists that um, I can tell are in the hobby phase, but they want the benefits of it being a job. Or in reverse, they're they're they say they want it to be a job, but they're doing hobbyish things. And so always define where you stand in that and learn it pretty quick because they are totally different. They are not anywhere near the same. And I hate to say that because a lot of people are gonna get on here and probably be like, Man, it's like it's the same thing, it's the love for the music. Da -da -da -da. It's the same thing as far as the passion of making music. However, where you go with it from, <laughs> from the studio is that whole decision there. So the only thing that's the same with a person that loves it as a hobby versus a person who loves it as a job is the actual in-studio performance of it or like writing and the actual, that's where it ends. All of this like, because... People then try to, you know, some people will say like, man, if you love it, you could do it for no money or whatever like that. And yeah, that is that is sometimes true. But the amount you then do it changes. Like we have to live in reality. The amount that you will do it changes because you have to spend time because we do still have to eat to live and everything like that. We have to pay money for tons of things we have to do. So we have to be real with ourselves and you have to be willing to understand how much effort you're willing to put into um, deciding this. Because <laughs> what I tell artists is this. The sacrifice of it being, it's two sacrifices. There's a sacrifice of it being a hobby and there's a sacrifice of it being a job. And the sacrifice of it being a hobby is that you're sacrificing which to some people, I'll say this, like, like to me, this is what it is. So take it as my opinion here. If I wanted this to be a hobby, I would be sacrificing me being happy doing something that I love. So what I'm sacrificing to make it a hobby is I'm saying to myself, I'm willing to just make this a pastime and I'm willing to go do something else that I may not love. Maybe because I'm either, I don't know if I'm scared of like the risk factors all in making it a job or um i see myself doing something else better or whatever that reason is it can be whatever reason it is to you but that sacrifice to me is that way going towards it being a hobby i'm sacrificing part of my i can i can say my happiness when i if i'm not going to do music as a full-time now on in the reverse what you're sacrificing is you're sacrificing your time and you're sacrificing your money when you go into the music industry. So I try to help people minimize that with the concert app. I try to help you minimize the amount of expenses because I want you to be able to learn how to build fans. And inside that, if people are really paying for your paying to come see you from one to 50 to 100 to 200, then you're basically matching out and then making money at points so it's like but you're never losing money because I, that's the one thing i don't like about parts of the music industry is like it's a lot of losing money versus 
hey, if my fans want to see me, then they're kind of paying to see me. So then I'm not losing direct money from me. And then at some point I'm making money back from this as I grow bigger and bigger. Um, and you're sacrificing a lot. Like you're sacrificing, of course, you're getting into the, you know, like the, <laughs> the building a business world, you're getting to the entrepreneurship world. So of course you're sacrificing everything from finances to like, um, the, your regular, like everyday, t like your time, because finding a plan that works for you time wise is going to affect everything in your life because it's not that set time. It's not nine to five. It like this job doesn't have a time span on it. So it's like <clears throat> you have to figure out what works for you because it's not a set time where you can say, I get paid this much to do this much amount of work. You're really looking at the idea of you could go a long time not getting paid anything. Like never seeing a dollar. I was lucky that my first show, I was actually able to make money, but shows after that there's tons of shows i've done tons of shows I've done i'd say hundreds and hundreds of shows that i've done that i've never seen a dollar from and whether they were promo purposes or where there were ways that we were trying to build build um contacts build networking with venues whether we were um doing national shows to like get our name out there buzz type shows everything that we did tons of them and you have to be willing to understand what that is because I, I see some people, which I'll talk about in a later episode, is like, yeah, like how much is um <laughs> like how much how much is uh like advertisement worth? Like, um because <laughs> you know everyone says do it for you know what I'm saying, like cross promo, do it for promo, you know what I'm saying, do it for free. But I'll talk about that in a later episode. But you have to understand when to do those because they are they are effective in some points. And if you have a plan based around it, then it makes sense to do those. But you really want to understand which way you're going, because if you're going to be a hobby artist, you can't force yourself into like a pay scenario because the gist of this is, is yes, you can probably get some gigs that will pay you every once in a while. But when you're forcing yourself into those areas as I've said before, you put yourself in a space where you diminish the amount of money an artist can make that's really putting in effort. Because what happens is, is then knowing you're not going to put in the level of effort the other person is doing, like for instance, a kid that will actually really push 100 tickets or 200 tickets and you're like not willing to do any of this and then you set yourself up in a space where you're fighting for the same spots as that kid and you get the spot and then you ruin it because you don't bring numbers or you don't do any numbers, then those bookers aren't going to book anyone in that area anymore. They're just going to naturally, they, it's weird. They just see it that way. They'll be like, yo, I just don't mess with any of this. And that's really not fair to do. Like that's messed up to do stuff like that because you mess it up for the kid that actually is willing to grind. Um, in reverse, if you are, if you are, a um, a person who's taking it seriously and like, Hey, then you have to move like that. So you can't get the benefits of it being a hobby. You can't get those relaxed times and stuff like that. Like I always tell, I, I tell artists all the time, what would you do at your job? If this is what you want as a job, what would you do at your job? Like I have artists that miss dates, miss times and stuff like that. Like, would you do that at your job? Like your job this week, are you just going to miss like two, three days? You have to take it as seriously as you would take a job. Like it has to be like, like I, I tell people, we used to drive four or five hours just to do two songs. Because we knew what we could turn over from it. Get there on time, wait, do everything we had to do because that's what comes with the job. And see, if you're not willing to be in those situations and stuff like that, then, yeah, maybe it should be a hobby then. And so, like, as I said, it's tons of things you're not going to get paid for. It's tons of nights that, like, I've seen, I know artists that sleep on floors and everything like that to try to get where they're going. Me, I, I, I had a plan that I was like, hey, I have to make money in closer 
like closer places so I could go home and I wanted to sleep on the floor before I expand out further. And then by that time I have some money so I can get hotels and do things like that. But it's one of those things that the sacrifice is crazy and you have to decide that up front. Otherwise you're just wasting, you're kind of like just wasting time. Like you're just in a space of you're not doing much and it's hard to switch back when you get further in it. The further you get in it, the more contaminated your mind will get and you'll get into a space where you believe something. And then like like I, I see dudes all the time. I see dudes that have gotten so far and gotten a little bit of buzz, but they did it kind of like the hobby way. But they have buzz because they're kind of popping in their community and they want it to be um, they they want to be the person that's it's their full time job. But now they're so far in the buzz that they won't go back and do the grind that a person that does it as a day job does. But because they did it in a hobby format, now they're stuck. So then they're too cool to do. You know what I'm saying? And that's the superstar effect. If you ever look at the superstar effect video, you can see when I talk more about that effect. But that's one of those reasons why it's hard to decide this later. You have to decide this out the gate because when you're first fresh into it, you don't have these ideas of um, what should be like, um, what things should be like and what you're willing to do because you, you've you committed so far into making people believe you're either a superstar or something like that, that now you can't go back and do the regular grind or you see things that happen in the industry and you mimic them and then it doesn't work for independent artists the same way, but you still try to keep a brand very similar. So now you can't go back and do the grind. And then in reverse, if you go so far into the hobby world, you always feel the the entitlement of not having having to do that. So then it's kind of like you don't ever have to do these things. So then but then you will still expect, you know, like. there, like you can't jump back in it. Because it's not the hobby world now. So if you went doing it the whole time and you didn't have to do like you got a couple gigs here and you never really cared and everything like that. The switch to be like, hey, I'm going to take this seriously is a hell of a switch after you consistently done it one way. And so this to me is the most important thing. Day one after the after you learn how to do music and record music, that's what you got to decide that day. You need to be like, yo. Are we going to run and take this seriously or is this a hobby? You see what I'm saying? Like, is this just going to be a hobby? Because you cannot go one way and expect the benefits of the other side. And they are nothing alike. So decide that. And that's one way, especially if you are trying. Like, luckily, um, in my in my world, I guess you could kind of hobby it out. Like if you do, like I know some people that just bring their family every time. Like and their family's gonna come see them perform. They probably perform once every like five months and they they sell a couple tickets to their family. And that may be in a hobby route, which kind of can kind of work in a little hobby route, I guess. Um, and of course, in concert, if you want to take it and make music your day job, that's what this is all about. So um, once again, that's my, uh, that's my, Main thing I think all artists should decide up front. Uh, and this has been Music is a Day Job. I'm your host, Sean. It's brought to you by the concert app. Now, once again, as I always tell people, concert is now in multiple states. Um, if you go online, if you go onto the app, of course, download the app, and then you can see what all states we're in. In those states, we do have shows and conferences coming up, so make sure you jump on those. If you have any connected venues in those areas, definitely let us know because that's easier for us to start getting shows in those areas. Um, if you're not in any of those states or cities, then get everybody you know onto the app because then I can start seeing who's all on the app and then that builds the demand for us to get out there. Once again, if you know any venues, that makes it also easier for us to get out there. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment you know what to do and so we can get this out to everybody so people start making music into a day job and that's what this is all about so once again i'm sean and this has been music as a day job